Hey everyone, Chris Lewis from Fox 47's Digital Newsroom. Thanks so much for being back again this week for another Rebound Mid-Michigan segment. We're talking about how each of us can work to rebound from COVID-19. And today we've got some great guests. We have Ryan Fewins bliss and Christopher Tremblay, both of the Michigan College Access Network here. We're going to be talking about FAFSA. For those of you that don't know, that's the free application for federal student aid. And we're going to be talking about financial aid and college. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here today. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's my pleasure to have you here. I'm really excited to be able to talk about this because I know that there's a lot of questions when it comes down to financial aid and when it comes down to uh, paying for college in a regular year. We are in different times. And with that in mind, I know that with many people, there are different financial circumstances that they are in now with COVID-19. Parents may be out of work. They may have filled up the FAFSA before. What should they be doing if their circumstances have changed and they're planning to start college in the fall? For students who have uh, not yet applied for financial aid uh, using the FAFSA, uh, first of all, it's not too late, right? So students who are still planning to enroll this fall, uh, maybe they didn't think before they needed to rely on federal financial aid or institutional aid, and maybe now they do, so they should still complete the FAFSA, uh, and they do that at fafsa.gov. Uh, for students who have applied and their financial circumstances have changed, uh, because the FAFSA is based on 2018 tax data, which is now, you know, one to two years old, uh, students should contact the institution that they're planning to enroll in uh, and ask for their professional judgment process. Uh, so each school has paperwork that a student can fill out uh, that discloses what may have changed since they filed the FAFSA. Again, if there's been a loss of income for one or two parents, uh, that information can then be reconsidered so that the student uh, may now be eligible for a federal Pell Grant, maybe an increase in institutional aid. And so colleges and universities will look at that on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, and so students should reach out to find out how to start that process and they should do it sooner than later. Uh, obviously documentation will be required uh, in order to support their you know, their claim uh, that they're making, but institutions uh, are preparing to be able to, you know, complete that review process in order to let the student know if there can be a change in their financial aid status. Yeah, this is a great example of why filling out the FAFSA is so important. Even if you think your family makes too much money and you won't have access to any aid and that it's not worth your time, it's free, it's very easy. Uh, we really encourage everyone to fill it out. It's an information point that helps students and families make decisions. Uh, so filling it out really costs nothing but a few minutes of your time to have this great information to help you make those decisions moving forward. And to add to Ryan's point, you know, the application is completed annually through a renewal process. So again, even if you don't think you might need aid this year, apply because next year the renewal process will be much less than starting the application. Because again, we don't know what the future holds and students should be as prepared as possible because anything that they're offered like a loan, they can always decline or accept a portion of a loan if they don't want to take out the entire amount that they might be offered. Now, a lot of people are saying that we are headed into a recession, and with that comes more fear and more concern about being able to afford college in general. Are there tips or hints that you might offer to people that are, are thinking that and, and how, on how people can afford college during recession? Students, uh, first of all, you know, most students who have applied to more than one institution can compare their financial aid offers uh, and take a look at um, you know, that information. And sticker price is not the only piece of information a student should look at. It's really the net price after aid has been offered to a student. And so I think taking a look at you know, what that is. Also looking at what institutions are holding their tuition at the current rate. They're not increasing it. Schools are having to make some difficult decisions right now, uh, but that may, that may, may 
break it for the student uh, if you know tuition increases to a point where uh, it hits them financially, so they can look at that. Uh, certainly in Michigan, we have lots of options for students to pursue post-secondary education. Uh, we know that local community colleges offer uh, a different rate, uh, and also, you know, students can live at home, so there's certainly plenty of opportunities, and students should always explore those opportunities before not pursuing post-secondary education. In fact, you know, they should continue their education immediately out of high school uh, so that they can stay in the mix and be ready so that in four to six years, uh, they can enter the workforce and start supporting themselves uh, and be ready to contribute uh, and, and follow their passions. Yeah, and I think something very simple, Chris, is that students and families should pick up the phone and call their local community foundation. There's almost one in every county in Michigan, and they are just sitting on piles and piles of money that is dedicated to student scholarships. Uh, I just heard recently from, I live in Bath, and the local Lions Club made decisions about their scholarship process, and only seven students applied, seven students out of the entire community. So there's money to be had. Students and families just aren't necessarily going at it, and they, and they don't know about it. So pick up the phone, call the community foundation, and say, hey, what kind of scholarships do you have available? What am I eligible for? And make sure you're accessing that type of aid as well. You know, also as a reminder, most colleges and universities offer payment plans, and so many families could take advantage of spreading their, their fall semester payment out over multiple months rather than having to pay it, you know, in late August, early September, when that might still be a burden for many families. Uh, and so they should look into what that option is and, and what would that look like when the payment is, you know, spread out. Now, if students or parents have other questions about, about financial aid or about just the college process in general, where would you send them? Yeah, uh, MCAN has uh, organized a free college advising hotline for all students in grades 9 through 12. Students can call or text. Uh, they can access the phone number at micollegehelp.org. Com. And that is a free service that we're providing. It's staffed by nearly 100 college advisors who can help students uh, research options for paying for college, complete the FAFSA, connect them to resources at particular colleges or universities that they might be admitted to or thinking about applying to. Mm -hmm.